All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing out there? This is Rob here at Smirk and Gun Reviews. Back to talk about something I've been jonesing to talk about all day. The more I talked about it, the more I wanted to make a video about it and talk about it. Uh, and that is that we're on the cusp as of recording this tomorrow. Uh, we are finally getting the Mass Effect Legendary Series for PS4, uh, Xbox 360, and... Uh, or is it Xbox Series X? Uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't follow up Microsoft anymore that much. Um, which includes all three original games, 4K updated, all DLC except for the one that's missing. And, you know, just everything updated, especially Mass Effect 1, which does not get enough love because of some of the, 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 the problems that it had that seem to be addressed in this new game. And I just really wanted to talk about it before the game came out because on my channel, if you go to Smirking Gun Plays starting tomorrow, uh, we are going to be doing a massive, no pun intended, uh, thing on my channel for over there on Twitch where we're going to be playing uh, dual playthroughs as Femme Shepherd and uh, Male Shepherd. Uh, we're going to be doing a Paragon and a Renegade through one per character. Uh, so... My male shepherd uh, is probably going to be uh, uh, the renegade, and my femme shepherd is probably going to be the paragon. Uh, and we're going to do, we're going to play a certain amount of the game as one, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to play the second, and we're going to show the differences, like probably through, like, as you get to like a big choice, um, some major choice. You know, like each time there's like kind of a big uh, a choice that could change something. We're probably going to switch back and forth doing that throughout the entire series. I played that way on my own a, lot, a while back uh, when I was playing this on PS3 and uh, Xbox. I think back then I would I did it. I think the first time I did that was on Xbox, and then I did it again on PlayStation 3, uh, just because I love this series so much. And that's what we're mainly here to talk about, though, is why Mass Effect. I even broke out the, my N7 shirt that does not fit me very well anymore. <laughs> um, too many cookies. Uh, why Mass Effect is my favorite series. And that's a big thing to say, really. I mean, some people can say stuff like that about their mo favorite movie or comic book. You just, like, flat out, they just know. But... To say, you know, Mass Effect, the series, is my favorite series of video games, it's not an easy decision outright because I've been playing games since I was, like, six. And I remember, I mean, our first console was an Atari 2600. And even back then, you know, when, you, when you're playing and you just, you, your imagination, if you have one, <laughs> you know, you, you, I was already thinking, like, how... What, you know, like, what could be possible down the road? How great, you know, how great are video games going to be in 20, 30 years? And here we are all that time later. And we're at this great cut. We're, we're at, if you can get a system, right? Uh, we're, we're in this great age of just gaming. Gaming has never been better in my opinion. Uh, you know, I, I have strong memories of PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and even Sega Genesis and the original Super Nintendo. I have, I have fond memories of all the gaming systems that I've had. But every time, you know, as long as you allow yourself to evolve and adapt, you can get enjoyment out of anything, you know, that's new. And Right now with the PlayStation 5, you know, if you can get one or an Xbox, the new Xbox, um, you know, we're, we're about to start a new gaming journey. I was a little surprised that the new Mass Effect Legendary Edition isn't going to be, isn't on PS5. Maybe it will be later. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'll get the upgrade or whatever they want me to do. Um, but to say, you know, like... Mass Effect is my favorite series. I had to think about all the great series that I played because, I mean, I have some 
real great love for some great franchises like Sly Cooper and Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank and The Last of Us. And I'm trying to think of series that I've played multiple times. God of War, um, Final Fantasy, Borderlands, uh, you know, or at least games that have more than one game, like The Evil Within. I'm looking at my, my stuff. All the Lego games. Um, Crash, ba Crash Bandicoot or Assassin's Creed. I've never missed an Assassin's Creed game. And they've got a shitload of them. And you'd think that that's my absolute favorite series. But it's not. And what are the criteria? What's the major criteria for picking Mass Effect 3? Well, the thing... I'm I'm a story gamer and a character gamer. And gameplay, you know, kind of comes in second. Right? I mean, if one really doesn't work, it really doesn't matter how good one or the other is. If gameplay sucks and you've got a great story, you know... Mm, and same and vice versa for me. I'm not an online like multiplayer person. I'm not uh, an MMO person. I'm not a, 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 a racing game person. I'm not a fighting game person. I'm I like platforms and I like adventure games. I like first person shooters. I like JRPGs. You know and that the Mass Effect to me has all of the things that I love in one big package. And that's not to take away from any of those other series. You know, they all have really great stories and really great characters. But there's also another thing about Mass Effect that a lot of games don't have. And if they do say that they do this, uh, they kind of cheat like Telltale games. And that's choice. Now, there's not 100% freedom of choice in Mass Effect. There is a story in there that they need to get to, and, they, and sometimes certain things don't always play out as big as uh, other things. But like, you know, Telltale Games used to make you feel like, you know, that you were really, you know, making choices that mattered. But if you really look at it, a lot of those games still take you exactly where the game wants you to go. But Mass Effect has choices starting even in the first you know starting in the first game that once the end once that you play the second and the third they all carry over with your saves so that by the end of Mass Effect 3 uh, whether you liked the ending or not um, things really played out uniquely and I'm sure that a lot of every people you know a lot of you know we all See, there was only so many choices, so you know we all experienced. Uh, depending on how many times you played it, you might have seen all the different choices and all the different ways that things can play out. But it still never gets, it never got old. It's the game that I can keep coming back to, like The Last of Us and other series. But it's also in these characters too. These characters, I I'm not the biggest sci-fi nerd. I love Star Wars, right, and other things like it. But there's something about the way that these characters are. They feel so lived in. You get so much explanation. They go so far into uh, like a racist culture, different alien cultures in this. They really get you entrenched in things that uh, the only thing that I feel like EA is really missing out on with Mass Effect when you talk about Mass Effect like this and all the different races and, and their cultures and, and all the different uh, traditions and things like that that make up these characters. Um, this game really should be like Destiny, where it shouldn't just be one game. It should be a game and then just kept kept going, where you just get a new, you know, uh, a new expansion, where they can, you can, you know, have another 12 or 20 hours of gameplay. Uh, with whatever new section they want to build, because this is a universe, and that was one, it was one of the things I just never understood. Because whenever I play one of these games, I always as big and as long as you can play them, right? Because you get a lot of gameplay out of this if you really do everything. I never, I could never be satisfied. I was never satisfied with where I was just like, no, 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 no I want so much more. I could play this game. I could live in this universe and play in this universe for the rest of my life. If I could only play in the same universe for the end of time, it would be Mass Effect because I just, for some reason, I'm just get so entrenched in what these characters are up to. Whether it's Garrus or 
uh, Morden Solis or Tally or Miranda or, you know, Rex or just Jack. God, I, the, the characters, the choice of characters uh, that you have in this game also. There's just so many. And, and while not everybody gets like the same amount of attention all the time, you get enough with everybody to really make you feel like you're there and, and present in their universe. And as your main character, Shepard, whether you're female or male, you also get to go on this journey where so much that you do and say affects things. And a lot of things, you know, are, you're going to make a lot of choices tailored to who you are. Or you might want to take a lot of chances and say, well, this is complete. I want to play a game and do it completely opposite of who I am. You can do that too. They give you those options. And not just that, but this game also, I mean, it has a great story. But also, it just so happens the gameplay is fantastic. And while I remember when I first played Mass Effect 1, I was a little shaky about it and I put it down for a while. I started Mass Effect 1. And I put it down and I never picked it up again for a while. And I, Mass Effect 2 came and went and 2 came out and it was just lauded by all these people. And I finally looked at it and said, okay, okay. And I played, I, I did the wrong thing, right? I started playing Mass Effect 2 and I realized they were like, hey, your choices matter. And, you know, if you haven't played one, you know, and I stopped. I stopped myself from going any further. I didn't beat Mass Effect 2. I was like, I didn't get that far. So I, I said, okay, I'm going to do this right. And I picked Mass Effect 1 back up, and I never looked back. I, I just really got into the combat system. It does have these kind of RPG uh, elements to the combat where you can't just have unlimited power. You do have to have strategy. Uh, when you're in uh, these the, the the combat situations, the 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 way of there's the the character customization is extensive. The combat choices are extensive. Whether you want to have powers or just you know wield guns or you know do a lot of melee, there it's all here too. And again all these wonderful worlds and planets that you go to the ship that you have the normandy is one of the most memorable ships in the history of gaming you feel like it's yours by the end of the third game when you you know and things that happen you you feel like the normandy is a place that you want to live in i want to go to a normandy if somebody made a life-size normandy replica i would fucking go day one if i could now, to go back to story, again, this is a story that is, I think, relevant. Especially, you know, the longer that this planet keeps on spinning, uh, with the way that the things are in the world, where basically everybody kind of hates everybody, right? It just feels like everybody just <laughs> wants to tear each other apart. In this world, you know, we've, we've managed to reach out to the stars, and we've managed... You know, light speed travel, and we have these. We we reached first contact, and we we had our first conflicts out there, and we got the uh, we got the Mass Effect relays that send us to all corners of the galaxy, uh, the universe, to reach out and 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 you know, kind of like Star Trek, you know, boldly go where no man has gone before, and 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 contact new lives, and and at this point in the universe. You know, the, the whole world is, you know, the, the earthlings have spread out and are everywhere, you know, like can be in different corners of the universe and different races treat you differently and we treat different races differently. And that conflict is kind of had to, you know, there's a threat that comes that is and will kill everything and how... Shepard has to try to get all these, you, you know, races of beings to come together to stop these Reapers that are coming to basically get rid of all of us, everything, because it's like this thing that happens like every certain amount of time period. Uh, they allow uh, a civil civilizations to go certain far, certain distance, and then they knock you back down to zero. And it's basically been happening since the beginning of time. And now 
this is the chance to stop the cycle. But you have to, we have to, the story is you have to get through every, to everybody to realize, you know, we are all not so different. We all need to fight together to stop this thing. And if we can't come together, then what's the point of going on? And I feel like that is a very relevant thing to talk about still today and probably will be for the rest of time. But there, it doesn't mean that we can't keep trying, right? And that's one of the other things about this game series that I love is the hope it has amidst all this conflict. And just the immersion you can have in this. You know, there, I'm, I, even when I'm just having a conversation with some, you know, regular ass NPC, I'm never bored because you never know what is going to happen to, in any given conversation that you have in this game. Even if you think, oh, I'm just going over here to do blah, blah, blah thing that usually you do in a game, you really don't know how it will turn out. I mean, unless you've played it a bunch of times, but even then you still, when you go back to it, you look forward to talking to so-and-so and having the conversation suddenly go, whoa! Because that's another thing, is looking in the nooks and crannies and finding all the little secret things that you, if you don't look for, you won't find. And this has that in space. Plus, it has, you know, the, the, the great mapping system. It has the great uh, way to get around with the Mako, which, again, is getting an overhaul. And the DLC, all the DLCs and all the guns that you're going to get and all the armors you're going to get. You get so much in here. And I should be getting paid to do this, but I'm not. I just wanted to, I wanted to just talk briefly about how much I loved every moment of playing this game. And how much, you know, for anybody new to the series, how much you're going to fall in love. You're going to find your character. You're going to find one or two or three or four. Or maybe you're just going to find one that just you really, really hold on to. Like, I happen to, re I, I have a hard time picking. I love more than Solas. I love Garrus. I love Rex. Oh, my God. You know, like, Thane. Oh, my God, I love Thane. I love Joker. Uh, I <laughs> there's, there's so much. Oh, Tally and Liara and, and just ever, you know, like, I could, I look at them and I think of them like I've been around my whole life. Like, like, I think of them like Han, Luke, and Leia, except they've only been around for about, you know, what, 10, 15 years? That's the kind of impact that the characters in this story have on you. And I'm trying not to, like, spoil anything, you know, for anybody who hasn't played this game. But when characters die, and they will, you know, it really, really affects you, and it's earned. And it has so many just memorable, epic moments that just are quintessential sci-fi and yet somehow feel fresh and new and I and again I don't want to keep rambling and rambling and rambling about this but that is why Mass Effect 3 is my favorite game series and will be until you know they just add on to it and then it'll just be more because to be honest I didn't hate Mass Effect Andromeda looking back on it I just wish that they had carried on with the story better and didn't try to rush it out like, you know, with the graphics and everything. I still enjoyed that game. Didn't enjoy it as the original three. But hopefully when Mass Effect continues, they'll continue off of this story. And maybe, really, EA, listen, I know that I'm just a nobody on YouTube. But make this your destiny. Make expansions, create, stay in this universe and just keep, you like, forget about microtransactions, EA. Just keep charging us to play this game. Make the world and spread it out and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And we will play this forever and you can still charge us and we'll pay. So anyway, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> I probably have more, but I got to stop. Uh, so anyway... If you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please consider becoming a subscriber. We are just under 200 away from 2,000 subscribers. So uh, it would be really awesome if we could get to that this year. Otherwise, uh, this is Rob from Smirking Gun Review saying play Mass Effect Legendary Edition. And if you don't want to, go get some of the older games and play them on your old systems. It doesn't matter. Play them. You won't regret it. And if you do, well, sorry. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Bye.